Hey, I know it's been a while, so for today's vlog, we're gonna do something different. I'm gonna take a step out of the chair, take a grand tour of what an Arab house is like. And I know some of y'all might have already seen that MTV Cribs parody, but we're gonna be serious, all right? This is gonna be a super serious tour. It's gonna be informational, educational. You're gonna learn a lot, all right? So pay close attention. So right through the front door, first thing you notice when you enter my house is these big plants. Now, uh, purpose of these plants is to keep out the evil spirits. Rumor has it, Jin are allergic to bamboo. We got the free Syria flag, cause we're Syrian and we love freedom. Got the obligatory, Arabic artwork hidden behind the magic plants. Also this uh, tapestry, which is pretty unique. Apparently it's like ancient Jerusalem. Basically in every Arab house, there's just gonna be mad tapestries everywhere. Like what, what is that even? I don't even think that's Arab. We also got the umbrella by the door in case Mary Poppins drops by and needs a ride home. More random calligraphy. I don't even know what it says. It's just sideways, but it looks cool. We got a snowman, which is pretty unique, and one of the house pets. Now that's definitely something that you don't usually see in an Arab house, is a cat. Because out in the Middle East, there's no Bob Barker on Price is Right telling us to spay or neuter our pet. Helps control the pet population. Have your pet spayed or neutered. So basically, there's just cats everywhere. And have you ever seen a turf war between two cat gangs? Trust me, it's scary stuff. Don't mess with the gin plants. What are you doing? So you're gonna have to forgive the messiness. Mama's been out of town and we've been traveling, so cleanup hasn't really been in our schedule. Ooh, phone. Just kidding, we never answer our house phone. So in every Arab house, there's a guest room. That's where we have our fancy furniture um, imported. But one thing that you'll exclusively find in an Arab house is these random decorated chairs. Like, what is the point of that? Seriously. And it's funny because whenever we have like a huge party, my mom will be like, bring out the fancy chair, bring it out. And it's like the party can't start unless somebody's sitting on this. And I just don't get it. Oh, and we also have these balloons. Thing is, it's nobody's birthday, nobody's graduation, nobody's wedding. We just have balloons. Actually, I think that's pretty cool. Goodness. Yes, goodness. Oh, another thing to point out about every Arab house is there's carpets everywhere. Carpets here, carpets on the stairs. Carpets in the living room, or guest room. Carpets in the dining room. Which is like, what, why would you have a carpet in the dining room? There's gonna get, be food crumbs all over it. Again, excuse the mess. The dining room, like the guest room, is, has to be as extravagant as possible because we have to show off to our guests. That's just the way things are. We have more calligraphy than our house has room for, so we just kinda gotta set it on the floor. One thing I really like about our Arab house is this thing right here. I don't even know what it's called, but they're for like, if your family has company over, but you're just chilling and you don't wanna be seen, so you can have the guests over here, and then you can creep through the barrier. Nobody's gotta know about it. So we're gonna take a peek behind the barrier into the kitchen. Yay, kitchen. Again, there's a carpet on the kitchen floor. Don't know why, it's like the worst place for a carpet. And every kitchen usually has an old lady working on some sort of food or another. In this case, my grandma. Hi, Tete. Hi, Tete. Yum. I don't know what that is. Chicken? That doesn't look like chicken. Kitchen tour isn't complete unless you take a look in the fridge. Well, it's a little emptier than usual, but you got your random items as always. What's in here? Potatoes. What does we say, batata? Every bowl must have a lid. Pita bread. And tortilla bread. You gotta have... What, like, what? Why is that in the fridge? So as we make our way into the living room, take note of the calligraphy. One, another one, another one. So here's a challenge. If you can count all the calligraphy in my house, you'll get a prize. Um, I don't know what the prize will be. You won't get a prize, but it'll be cool to know. So enter the living room. As you notice, we have a carpet on top of our carpet. It's what we like to call the double carpet technique. And you know, this is a pretty normal living room, to say the least. Except for, you know, mandatory extra calligraphy. Oh, and the elliptical. Cause you know, we work out while we watch TV like normal people. This is what we like to call a table carpet. It's a carpet for your table. Table carpet, table carpet, 
Look, we even got some calligraphy hiding right up there. We have a clock. Watch out. And then we have this thing, which is way out of place. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna get rid of it right now. Sorry. You got your withering flower collection as a metaphor, you know, for life. We think deep. All right, so now it's time to take you guys upstairs to the grand finale, the moment you've all been waiting for. So everybody has their skeletons in the closet, everybody has their secrets, and every Arab family has their secret room. Now, I warn you, what you see here is something that's never been shown to anyone outside the Arab circle before. So get ready. Here it goes.